<laughs> a plant-based diet, high in fiber, generous proteins, healthy fats, giving the fuel that the brain needs for that prefrontal cortex to function effectively. That was Barbara O'Neill, an acclaimed author, educator, and international speaker renowned for her extensive work in natural health and nutrition. Today, we are discussing the foods that can harm our brain health, a subject that is becoming increasingly important as we learn more about the connection between diet and cognitive function. Your deep expertise in natural health makes you the perfect person to shed light on this topic. What we eat has a profound effect on our brain function and overall mental health. Certain foods can contribute to inflammation, oxidative stress, and other negative processes that impair cognitive function. It's essential to be aware of the foods that can damage our brain health so that we can make more informed dietary choices. So, let's listen as Barbara tells us about the first food. The problem is with sugar, cereals, takes you up quickly and then drops you quickly. So when your blood sugar goes high, how's intellect, judgment and reason there? Uh, almost bypassed. It's like trying to control a fast car. I, I would not like to drive a car with the accelerator stuck down. That would be terrifying. I don't think it'd be terrifying for my husband. He loves speed. So what happens when sugar enters the body? When sugar levels go in and blood glucose levels rise, it's almost like trying to control a fast car. So very quickly the brain says, pancreas, release the insulin, get it down, it's too high. But because so much glucose was there, too much insulin's released and now it goes too low. How's intellect, judgment and reason down there? It's out the door. What's it, what's it saying? Lights are on but no one's home. How quickly does this occur? How long does it take before prefrontal cortex isn't working? Ah, two minutes. You want easy parenting? Forget the sugar. Now I used to make dessert for my children two or three times a week. Children love sweet things. But I made it with maple syrup or honey or dried fruits. The following is an overview of the different types of sugars. Sugars, a type of carbohydrate, are classified into monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides, the simplest form, include glucose primary energy source, fructose, fruit sugar, and galactose milk sugar. Disaccharides consist of two monosaccharides, sucrose, table sugar, lactose milk sugar, and maltose malt sugar. Polysaccharides, complex carbohydrates, include starch, plant energy storage, glycogen, animal energy storage, and cellulose, plant cell walls. Sugar alcohols like sorbitol, mannitol, and xylitol are used as low-calorie sweeteners. Each type has distinct properties and roles in nutrition, and Metabola's Barbar will now tell us about the second food that wreaks havoc on your brain. Not far, in fact almost equal with the sugar is the hybridized wheat of today. We looked at that earlier in the week, how it created a starch structure that gets the blood sugar level up even higher than refined sugar. And there are a few books that talk about the link between wheat and mental illness. In other words, this has been compromised. Uh, Grain Brain by Dr. David Perlmutter, he's a neurologist. Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis. Gut and Psychology by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride and Dr. Bruce Fife's book, uh, Stop, he Stop Autism Now, Stop Alzheimer's Now. All of these books talk about the link between, yes, refined sugar and the hybridized wheat and mental illness. In other words, the compromise of the prefrontal cortex. Hybridized wheat refers to wheat varieties that have been selectively bred to combine desirable traits from different parent plants. This process involves crossbreeding different strains of wheat to produce offspring with specific characteristics such as higher yield, disease resistance, improved nutritional content, and better adaptability to various environmental conditions. Modern hybridization techniques have significantly transformed traditional wheat, resulting in shorter, sturdier plants that are less prone to lodging falling over. These modifications aim to increase productivity and meet global food demands. However, 
Hybridized wheat has also been associated with changes in protein and gluten content, which some believe contribute to increased gluten sensitivity and other health issues. Barbara will tell us about a third food which is not good for the brain. Caffeine. How does caffeine affect prefrontal cortex? It directly affects prefrontal cortex. Let me show you how. Here's the nerve cell. And remember, the nerve cell is not like any other cell. The nerve cell communicates with the next nerve cell via little chemical messengers. They're the receiving stations. This is the arm that comes out. This is the axon. These are the little filaments at the end of the arm. And they're the boutons. Here is the next nerve cell. And these are the receiving stations. So what happens is the neurotransmitters or little chemical messengers come in. They're encapsulated in the inside of the cell. That little capsule is sent down the arm into the little boutons and it's released out to the next one. It is estimated that one nerve cell can communicate with 20,000 other nerve cells. That's incredible. And those little neurotransmitters, they can be traveling anywhere between two and 200 miles an hour. In a crisis, it can be that. But it seems like coffee works for me. And how many people have a cup of coffee and say, oh, that's better, my brain's going, that's right, acetylcholine's risen. Oh, and I feel better, yes, your dopamine levels are rising. But now the brain says, we've got a chemical imbalance. You see, it can cope that with that in a crisis because this adjustment is necessary in a crisis to save your life. But the person's just sitting in the cafe bar drinking their coffee and the brain says they're not moving, they're not running, quick. Develop extra receptor sites so we can try and maintain the brakes. Stop making so much acetylcholine. Eventually dopamine levels are exhausted. So the person might feel good straight after the cup of coffee. No wonder there's a crisis. But then you've got this corresponding effect that eventually depletes. So what does it do? And what the hybridized wheat and the sugar cause is a fuel imbalance in the brain. And when our brains run according to precision balance, they're not coping very well with this fuel and this chemical imbalance. And how many people today, in fact, in, in Australia, the current figures of 50% of Australians at some time in their life suffer from some form of mental illness. That was not so a hundred years ago. Some say, well, it just wasn't documented a hundred years ago. No, no, no. Let's move on. We're looking at what compromises prefrontal cortex function and how many Americans woke up to those three foods for breakfast. So what's the next food that is deleterious to our brain? Alcohol. Alcohol is a neurotoxin. And the Australian Health Department have stated there is no safe dose of alcohol. It's a neurotoxin. It kills brain cells and the brain cells we have now, we've got for life. Look after them. I guess we all know what the effects of too much alcohol is. So when the accidents happen, it's because this is compromised. They take the corner too wide. Their judgment is gone. They take the corner too early. How many tragic stories do we hear of a drunk going into the back of a family car? Mother and father, three kids dead, and the drunk walks away. Mm. It's, um, it's tragic. And you have your history. Alcohol was banned for 13 years, 1920 to 1933. It's called the Prohibition. In that time, here are the figures. The mental institution occupancy dropped to 8%. Jails almost empty, domestic violence almost wiped out, all because one thing had been eliminated, and that's the alcohol. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.